Welcome back. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I and Savant Hilary purpose to talk about marriage at this time of the year because it is that season when uh, so many people are looking out for either attending a loved one's wedding or themselves are being prepared to start that journey of marriage. And then there is those of us who are still believing God for that blessing to meet the right person so we can also start that beautiful, amazing journey of marriage because, I mean, it's, it's God's will for us. You know, he laid Adam to rest, to ma he made him to sleep, and then took out his rib and, 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 and made him someone perfect for him. So it's really the will of God that we all get to walk that beautiful journey of marriage. But for those that haven't yet begun to walk that journey, we are here to prepare you and to give you insights on what God expects you to be like, what God expects that man, that perfect woman, that you're going to start that journey with to be like. In other words, we're just helping you find that right partner and also helping you understand why actually you have an important role to play in that union that God values so much, which is marriage. So I want to good to have you on the show. I'm very much humbled and blessed to be here once again, brother. Thank, thank you for making time to come here. Amen, amen. It's just always a blessing to me to be part of this show. Amen. Yes. When we're starting out this series on marriage, yes. I know that today we are going to be continuing with uh, the ideal man yes. and what it, what, what, who he should be like. Yes. yes. But when we're starting out on this series, you mentioned something really important. Mm. That not everybody is supposed to be married. Marriage is not for everybody. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. Very... Remind someone. Why yes. marriage is not for everybody? <laughs> <laughs> and why you might be there looking out for a partner? You may not be the one made for to be married. Yes, our viewers should always understand this very well. Because uh, mm. uh, looking at Matthew 19, as we said, when Jesus was just giving us a hint of how God is planned for marriage. Mm. Yes, in the, I believe it is in the 10th verse where he said that, uh, where the apostles, disciples said that for sure, mm. if the things of marriage are like that, yes. it is very much good for someone not to marry. Yeah. And Jesus responding to that said, he did say that no, it is not the case. He said that seriously, this is just a gift that can be given from God, from above. Mm. Not everyone can accept this. But there are those people who, are, uh, who have made themselves enacts, they did not marry because they, they decided. There are those people who are made enacts by their bosses. There are those that were made enacts by God himself. So that gives us a revelation that marriage is not for everyone. So it's not a sin not to be married. It is not. It is, has never been a sin because Jesus himself did not marry. Paul did not marry. Daniel did not marry. Many people in the Bible that did not marry. So it is not a sin. Don't put yourself on pressure. If you feel the calling, the anointing of not, it is very much okay. Okay. Yes. So Interesting. as we discuss it is, let not all of us be on tension about marriage. Yes. There are some of us who are not made mm. to be married. Yes. So that is very important. Mm. Yes. Uh, but as we've been going through all this series, uh, today we are still continuing with, with man, yes, the ideal man. With the ideal man. Exactly. And last week I know we talked about the fact that the ideal man yes. must have a purpose. Yes. And not just having a purpose, but he must be aware of his purpose. Yes. 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 He must be in Eden. Mm. He must be found in Eden, in the presence mm. of the Lord. He has, mm. be, he has to be working. He has to yes. be working for his purpose, as we've said. Yes. And we said that uh, that ideal man, we said, he has to guard mm. the garden. Yes, mm. he has to, to be able to guard what God has trusted him with. He has to be obedient to the commandments of God. Yes. Uh, Self-discovery, mastery. Yes, we saw mm. from there. Now, yeah. today we are continuing with something yes. very important, yes. which mm. I think it is very key. And it was like I should begin with this this time on mm. this very ideal man, which is in uh, self-love. Self-love is very key. Mm. And this is just in, in, in Matthew chapter 22, verse 39, mm. when Jesus was asked, now, people, we've, we've went into the New Testament a little bit because yes. this was very key. Yeah. Now, Jesus was asked the question that, uh, uh, which is the, the great commandment above all these, you know, these guys had more than 600 laws the, mm. the, the, <laughs> in the Old Testament. Mm. The Pharisees, more than 600 laws. Yeah. I do know I'm this. I'm you, the Pharisees were big on laws. If there was any constitution, <laughs> one, those guys had laws. It was too big. <laughs> Everything <laughs> from washing your hand, washing yes. your feet, yes. you are unclean if you... Yes. <laughs> these guys had laws. So this guy came to Jesus <laughs> and asked them, as serious day. I can see you guy, you are, you are sent from above. Now help yes. us and save us. Yes. Which is the great law? Which is the greatest is the above greatest all, of all of these laws? All kind of stuff that you we know, do have. Look, you know, I'm <laughs> telling you, you can have so many laws that you're also even confused which one is the most important. <laughs> 
Now, <laughs> when Jesus was responding to this, because there's something that we need, mm. uh, there is an element of self-love that Jesus yes. was teaching here. Yes. And he said, yes, the greatest is the love of God with your heart and your mind and yeah. your strength and everything. Mm. But he said the second one is love others as you love yourself. Mm. Love others as you love yourself. Mm. This is uh, a law that comes into marriage here. When you are looking at an ideal man, ladies, I'm just telling you, this is a very key principle, self-love. Mm. Jesus did not say that love others, like love yourself like as you love, you love others. others. Yeah. He said love others as you, you love, love yourself. yourself. Mm. The principle is you begin with loving yourself. yourself. Yes. Then you share that love to others. To others yeah. We are having a challenge whereby a man claims to love the lady more than he loves himself. Ladies, we are just helping you here. Just look at a man, how he dresses, his house, how he conducts himself. Because you, you can't tell me that this guy is an ideal man when he's smoking. You know, he doesn't love himself. You know, he can't give what he doesn't have. You know, these things are very simple, but we just need to understand the concept that God is giving us here. Mm. You know, you look at a man, he stays in a bar from morning to, 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 to morning. He doesn't love himself. He, he doesn't love himself. He can't love you because he can't give you what he doesn't have. Mm. You know, mm. you can look at a man. If he can put good clothes on himself, mm. set of love, how do you think he will just clothe you well? You know, this is a guy that leaves the, the hairstyle when they're like nothing, very ramshackled and you think that this guy is going to, going to love give you, you a, he's going to love you he's going no. to give you something he doesn't ha la have so the thing is ladies this is very key and men it is also true mm. self love is very important and this is something that you can obviously see you know you yes. can obviously see mm. yeah, if a person cannot invest in himself and he's looking looking well you know uh having good friends this is all self-love because those people that you surround yourself with make a lot on make you they make you. The environment makes you. These people that we live with, you know, a certain philosopher said that if you are working with their nine fools, you are detained. So these are all <laughs> revelations of, of, you know, <laughs> revealing to you that... Be careful. If you're working with nine fools, you might be detained. You are detained. <laughs> so, <laughs> there's just not nine, but there are ten of you. There are ten of you. So the thing is, set of love is very, very, very key. important. Exactly. As you're looking for mm. an ideal man or an ideal person. Mm. So having said that, yes. we go to, back to Genesis. Mm. And this is Genesis 2.19. Yes. The Bible says that uh, a man named all the things you know, that God had created. It was God that gave him that power. Authority and authority so that you, you, okay, you name the things. Yes. yes. Mm. And now, in the Hebrew concept of naming, uh, name is, for them, they don't name like how we do here. Mm. For them, in their culture, naming, they, the name of a thing is its name. For them, they, they, they don't call a whale something else. They don't call Hillary a person who is not Hillary. They don't call a tree when it is not a tree, like how we do here. Mm. You find a person, a person is, a, you know, we have this element of, you know, naming from uh, movies and, mm. you know, these soaps and A, B, C, D people. Mm. That's how they name, without even knowing the meaning mm. of the, 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 mm. the, the name. If someone is peaceful, they are named peace. Exactly, exactly. If that is someone the, is, has joy, they are named, they are called joy. Exactly. You're named who you, what it you is are. What you are. So yeah. that is the Hebrew concept. Mm. So when God told Adam to name these things, Adam was naming everything according to its purpose, mm. according to its nature, according to its being. Mm. Now, why is it so important to get a man who's ready, who has that knowledge of naming things? You know, we are living in a generation where men do not differentiate between a maid and a wife. Mm. A man doesn't know how to name things. <laughs> <laughs> he's calling a maid. His wife. His wife. <laughs> and he already has a wife. And he's calling his wife his maid. Exactly. So you know? these are, <laughs> we're having this thing. <laughs> you <laughs> might end up with a man who is treating you as a maid instead. <laughs> exactly. Your wife is to and treating clothes, a maid. All, exactly. Know? And he treats you like a maid. Exactly. And then treating the maid. <laughs> as a wife. So this is very important. You, you must get a man who has this element of knowing yeah. how to name Things we have in you know in our setup like how the effect of sin you know the, there are these ladies who have come with their maybe children you know maybe she had given birth to to to, to uh, a daughter somewhere and she came in with in marriage with a daughter so you need to get a man who can differentiate that this is my daughter and this is my wife mm. we are having a challenge whereby a man loves the daughter still and still loves the mother this is the challenge so ladies be very careful with knowing that is this man 
has him grown to an extent of knowing how to name things mm. because this is will he will he take me for what i am exactly will he take me for the treasure that i that am, I am to exa- him? exactly oh exactly. he's going to you see you are you are treasure yeah. you know women ladies you are your treasures yes. Yes. And if, if, if this guy can't show it, yeah. he can't give you that name. Yes. Accord you that that you know. Exactly. There are, we are even having marriages whereby the wife is very much insecure about her friends, you know, because he knows the husband. Mm. The husband doesn't know how he to name. He hasn't given them names. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> this one should be friends. This one should be your wife, your, exactly. or your girlfriend, but, your exactly. spouse. <laughs> but it doesn't make a difference. So whatsoever comes in his way, it is it is it is he, he sees the advantage. So that is very key. Get a man who has grown up to an extent of knowing how to, to name. name things. Yes. Mm. Now the other thing is in uh, still in Genesis chapter two, ready to leave home. The Bible says that uh, a man shall leave his home, his mother and father, and go and unite mm. with the, his spouse. Mm. Yes. You, you should get a man who's ready to leave home. Mm. You know the, the Hebrew word for the word leave is the word azav, which means to forsake or to abandon. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> azab in Hebrew. Mm. This is and the Bible says that a man should azab, you know, abandon, forsake. You know, we are living in a generation whereby marriages are so much bombarded by men who are so much mother's boy or father's boy or you know family boy. Mm. You know, you've started marriage, but you know, a mother is still if affecting so much, you know, influencing a lot in your marriage. A man cannot even speak anything. Mm. When a mother calls and your man calls, you go for a mother instead of a father. You know, mm. or when a father calls, a man goes for a father instead of a wife. You know, a wife is saying this and the mother is saying this, you know, marriage is so much bombarded by this influence, outside influence. Mm. So ladies, it is very much important to get a man who's ready to absorb his family. I'm not mm. saying that leave them, you know, don't listen to them, but I'm talking about the influence, the mm. power, the ultimate power here in marriage. The Bible is very clear, you should absorb, you should leave your family. And I've said the, the meaning is to forsake, to abandon. Mm. Yes, they can say something, but the ultimate decision should be made by you and, and your, your wife. Spouse, exactly, yeah. and your spouse. Yeah. Not just, you know, these people that come into the thing. We have mothers that even can come to a home and say, why did you buy this chair? And the guy is like, you know, mother, maybe I should change. And the mother says, I'm bringing a car. We are taking them back. And the wife is saying, no, I love this. I think this is okay with us, you mm. know. So it is very key. Ladies, look at a man. If it is a mother's boy, I'm telling you, you're going to suffer. Because now, in this sense, you are marrying a mother and your husband. So mm-hmm. you have to make sure that you have to satisfy both of them. Yes. Which thing I think it is very, very tricky. Because the Bible says marriage is for two people. And they are no longer two, but they become one. one. If you bring in another power, an external power, mm-hmm. because you, you made a choice to a person, you didn't care about this because you wanted man and ABCD, mm-hmm. you're going to suffer of this. Yeah. So, ladies, be very careful and look at the man that you are going to. Mm. Now, the other thing is, get a man who's ready to unite. (laughs) To unite. Ready to unite. Yes, because we are having (laughs) some, to unite with you. (laughs) People (laughs) have made a choice with people who are not ready ready to unite. unite. (laughs) Exactly. So, and that is what we call division. That is what we call. Because that's division. That is division. Because where there is no unity. Yes. The other one has to exist. Exactly. Because Mm. the word division, you know, DI is a word that means two. DI. And now it is D, vision, two, vision. That is division. So Mm. if you come together with a man who is not ready to to, to unite, Mm. now you have two visions here. Mm -hmm. That means the marriage is not going to work, obviously. He's not ready to unite. Mm. Now, and I wanted to tell our viewers, the Hebrew word for, 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 for unite is dabak, which means to cling, mm. to stick. Yes. In fact, for the Hebrews, this word dabak is to stick. They mean like how you see the bone with the flesh. Mm. Yes, how you see the skin on the flesh. Mm. Something it is, which is very hard to separate. To separate yes. So I think, ladies, you should get a person who's ready mm. to unite with you. Unite we, are, we are looking at marriages whereby, you know, they started, they claim to have united, mm. but the accounts are different. You know, a guy has his plan and he's saying, you know, me, I bought these plots, they are, these are mine. Now the thing is, uh, let's start working with you here. Mm. 
but he cannot bring all these all that the things here, mm. exactly, to the spars. He can't declare all those things. <laughs> he can't have. declare all the things. Mm. We are having some people who come into marriage whereby he had his ex. You know, this ex had traveled maybe somewhere in America, and now the ex is back. And the guy is saying, now, you know what? You knew very well. I love Mary, and now Mary is back. I think, I don't know how we are going to work with, but I think we can just be here together because you knew, you knew very well I was in love with Mary. Now, don't go for a man who is not ready to unite. If he's still battling with his history, then I think he's not the ideal man for you. Mm. If he's still battling with the annex that he loved so much, you know, crying all the time, you know, you are not like Mary, you are not like Sarah. You know, Sarah was like this, we're still mm. comparing you with mm. the other ex. Mm. I think I'm telling you, that's, God, a, that's a wrong part. That is a wrong Don't person. even contemplate. Exactly. Don't try to cry yourself in exactly. the bed to sleep. Don't even go to God. He won't save you. You because just need to make because it. Because it's clear. It is very make, clear. Make that decision. <laughs> exactly. Make the decision. The guy is not Stop. for you. Stop. Yeah. The guy mm. is still in love with his mm. history. He's mm. not yet ready to unite with you. I that is it. very key. Mm. So, the other thing is, get a man who's ready to become one fresh. Mm. This is very, very key. Yes. The Bible says in the book of Corinthians, First Corinthians chapter 7, Paul said that your body is not, the body of a man is not for a man, it is for a woman. And the body of a woman is not for a woman, it it's is for a man. I'm talking yeah. about the married people. Mm. They're having a challenge in our generation whereby a man has many fresh. He, the freshes are many, he has Talk you, he has the it. other one, he has the other one. Mm. You know, <laughs> He has too many not... flesh around him. He has become a butcher man. <laughs> Fuck, that is the right one. The guy is just a butcher man. That's so weird. No. <laughs> so, go for a man. You are just who... part of that flesh, that part of that meat. You are just... <laughs> Those are very loving words. Now, we here, there is no way we can be kind on this. The mm. thing is, go for a man who is ready to become... One fresh. Stop they, being meat on display. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. We, we, you know, our generation is so much uh, bombarded with ignorance and you know this kind of desperacy in in, in in relationships because there are even ladies that go into a man that is she sees the man has another you know she, he's in love with another lady but the lady is still clinging on the man because he has maybe this materialistic kind of stuff mm. and she's like no hello so see, maybe I can win you, you try it's like people are gambling with everything but God did not create us to gamble. to gamble. God did not to experiment on everything. Yes. Yeah, he gave us the principles, he gave us the laws so that we can know how we can know how mm. things should be done. This is not about gambling. If a man is in love with another lady, just accept that that you know what? Mine is coming, you know. So, but if you try this and you know you you work on this, they will just use you. This is what is going to happen. Mm. So make sure your man is ready to be one fresh with you, not many, just mm. a piece of cake in the whole system. Mm. That is very, very, very important. important. Mm. Yes. Now, the other thing is, we talked about that the other time. Don't mm. get a man who is lonely. Get a man who is single, who is ready to, to you know, who is independent, knowing his purpose. Yes, the other thing is, get a man who is ready for a covenant. This is Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. Mm. Yes. If you look at uh, the concept of marriage, there is that kind of, the, 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 the covenant concept. Yes, God wants mm. a man who is ready to commit himself to you mm. within the boundaries of a covenant. Not just a commitment through words and, you know, <laughs> these other things that he brings to you and these uh, verbal kinds of, uh, you know, commitments that he makes. But according to God, get a man who is ready to go into a covenant relationship. Yes, let him uh, decide, let him make a commitment that today I'm taking this and that. Now we are having we are having a challenge in our generation that uh, you know ladies go to these guys who are not ready to commit themselves. You know, ladies, if he cannot uh, change to have you, he cannot change to keep you. Mm. Yeah, if he cannot make a commitment <laughs> to take you, yes. he cannot make a commitment to stay, to, with, to you. stay with you. Yes, mm. we should understand these things. You know, get a man who's willing to say that I'm, I'm going to your parents. That is one. After going to your parents, I'm ready to go before the church, before God and the family church to, 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 to make them witness and testify that now I'm no longer free, I'm enslaved to this person, to such and such a person. So if a person is not ready to commit himself to that extent of saying that I'm taking you, 
when all men are witnesses and God being the witness, then don't go into that man. You know, you know, ladies, I know sometimes you are just desperate, but you know, marriage is not for desperate people, as we talked the other time. Mm. It is for single people. Yeah. You have to make sure you love yourself too much that you are ready to share your love with another person. That mm. is what marriage is all about. It's not for desperate people. Mm. It's not, you know, for, for these people who are just yearning for comfort and, you know, uh, just uh, pleasure and FBC. It is for people who really love themselves and willing to commit themselves to love other people, to share their love, mm. the love they have for themselves mm. with other people. Mm. So that is very key. Get a man who is very much committed yes. to, 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 to you, to take you, as people can see. Now, the other thing is, now, get a man <laughs> who is very much ready for one wife. You know, Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. Hmm. Get a man who is willing and ready for, to have one, for one wife. For one wife. <laughs> exactly. Because the Bible says, uh, for that sense, a man shall leave his parents and go and cleave unto his wife. Wait, are there uh, two wives? Or two not wives. For one man? <laughs> <laughs> it is... And there is no, there's no allowance for the butcher man. <laughs> there is no allowance for butcher man. <laughs> the thing is, the Bible is very clear. Very no clear. allowance for butchering around. <laughs> exactly. A man who is ready to cleave unto one, one wife. wife. That is very key. Now we are living in a generation now. You people, let me tell you this. And I always tell people that mm. marriage is for dead people. You know, we shall discuss about the things in, in the future, I believe, God willing. Marriage is for dead people. You have to die to self. You have to, to, to allow yourself to die and the will of God to, to be done in your life. If a person has not died to self, like how Galatians says, 2.20, Paul says that I died to self and I no longer live. It is Christ that lives in me. Lives in now, me. if it's not Christ living in you, marriage is for dead people. If you are not dead, if you are not willing to, to make sure that now, I have you died. Give up on your flesh you give up let, on your flesh, exactly. And let Christ live in and you. And let Christ live in you. Because Christ has only one wife. Yes. This is church. You know, there's no way how you will find Christ having A, B, C, D, another person and this one. He has only one wife, who is his church. Mm. That's why Ephesians 5 says that men love your wife like how Christ loved the church. Mm. How did Christ love the church? He be clothed, you know, he bathed the church, he refined the church, he only has one wife, you know, he died for the church, he died for himself because he was a God. He was a, Christ was a God and he died for himself, you know, he took that nature of a human being. Mm. So if a man is not ready to die for himself, you know, this ego and, you know, he says that, you know, you don't see me, I look good, men ladies see me, you, you, mm. I just helped you to marry you, you know, ABC. Don't go into that man, mm. you know, ladies. Christ came down, he left the heavens and came down to the level of, the, of his wife. Exactly. Like, likewise, we need to put on the shoes of our wives. Love them like, you know, like you are in their shoes. Exactly. Like you want to be loved. Exactly. So you love her that much because you are in her shoes. Okay, this woman needs to be loved like this. I must love her. You know, and I committed myself mm. to this. Mm. Yeah. So ladies, don't go for a man who is not willing and ready to commit himself and to you mm. alone. Yes, because marriage is not for many people. It's only for two people, yes. and they become mm. one fresh. Mm. So if you, you 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 go for a man who's not ready to 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 to, 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 <laughs> to get to love you alone, then I don't know how you're going to handle that because that is not the plan of God. And I I, I always want to tell people yes. why do we talk about this? Mm. Because as we said previously, God initiated marriage. Don't bring your own understanding and concepts into this. Mm. God initiated marriage. And mm -hmm. let me just uh, advise our viewers, ladies, it is very important, don't go. It is not advisable. Anyway, this is not a law, but uh, I should uh, just throw in some advices here. Ladies, this is very key according to Genesis chapter 1 mm -hmm. and chapter 2. It is very key and important to go for a man who is older than you. This looks a bit challenging to most of us, but if you go into Genesis chapter 1 and chapter 2, God began with a man. Without doubt, man was older than a woman. Mm. So, Without no doubt, the man saw the sun before the woman Exactly. Mm. So I think, ladies, it is very key. We won't go into the psychological part of it, but the thing is, it is very important. Be it the fact that even you grow very much uh, on a very big rate, ladies. Mm. Yeah. If a man you are 20 years and a lady you are 20 years, you know, in no church, is going to be so fast. She's going to grow very fast. And you know, <laughs> men. No wonder the woman convinced Adam. 
because he seemed so alert. Exactly. So <laughs> about it. So I should advise very you. Very assertive. Ladies, yeah. Much as you have these things that you talk about and ABCD, but the thing is, it is very key. And let's get a man. You know, in mm. church, I always get in during these counseling sessions. I mm. get, you know, let me tell you this: Your friends are meeting, and you know, youth that are coming into. I don't know whether into my church, but the thing is, most of the the, the girls at the age of 18 to 25, they are single mothers. Can you imagine that? Mm. Yes. Almost 70% of them, mm. they are single mothers. Now, what does that tell me? But if I go into deep conversation with them, mm. they, they just fell in love with their fellow youth, you know, they were still young. And I always mm. tell uh, ladies that this is the challenge here. You, can, you are 20 years and you go for a man who is 20 years. You know, in fact, a man, a man, according to our generation, to grow up, you mm. need a man 30 years and above. Yes. According to our generation, it's very important to, to understand this. Ladies, I'm telling you the truth. 30 years and above, mm. that man can somehow, somewhere commit has himself mm. to, to, to marriage. Yes. But if a man is 24 years, 23 years, okay, they are there, but those are very few. Mm. So ladies, this is very key. Go for, look at the age of mm. a man. Yes. Because to, to, to our nature, uh, there is, uh, you know, 20 years a man is still struggling with this and that, you know, he's still seeing a lot. He's a butcher, in fact, most mm. of them, yeah. the majority, they are always, even mm. in the church, I'm talking about even youth in church, mm. yeah, he's still doubt maybe, should I take a black one, should mm. I take a tall one, should I take a big one, should I take, you know, he's still just struggling with yeah. choices. And so, I know so that, um, that, 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 that issue and the topic on single mothers is, is such a sensitive one yes. that we need to, yes. to give time and yes. discuss some time as yes, we still handle this topic of marriage yes. because why do we have so many single Mother's yes. generation. What are the the silent the, the silent causes yes. of, of single motherhood, yes. and how can we help our sisters and our yes. sisters overcome yes. uh, the situation? But also, as we summarize, just a quick question: Is there a right age to get married for both the men and women? Uh, according to uh, according to God, mm. uh, since this is an international television, mm. uh, this varies. This is just relative. Mm. Because if you go to countries like UK at 16 years, a person is an adult. Mm. If you come to countries like uh, Uganda here, 18, a person is an adult. Mm. Yeah, so we should so consider so much about adulthood. That mm. is very key. Mm. So a person must be an adult. Mm. But the thing is, marriage is not so much about age. This mm. is very important. It's so much about knowledge. Mm. What do you know about marriage? The information you have. Mm. Because according to God, his people are perishing and destroyed for lack of knowledge. Of knowledge yes. yes, being 30 years, being 40 years, being 60 years, that mm. don't make you a good c candidate for marriage. Mm. No, the knowledge you have. A person, a, a guy can be of 25 years, mm. but if maybe got an advantage of sitting at a right person, a, a right teacher mm. of God the principles you. of God, exactly. Yes. Mm. And when the person you is ready... You need to acquaint yourself with the principles of God. With exactly. What does God say about marriage exactly. in the first place? Exactly. How should I maneuver and go through us? Exactly. So seek God first. So it's <laughs> exactly. not about your age, exactly. but seek first the kingdom of God. Find exactly. out what God says about marriage. What does God expect you to be like as a husband yes. or a wife before yes. you even think of getting there? Unless you're ready. Yes. I'm telling you, you are going to Fiji. Yes. Thank sure. you so much, Savatira, for coming through Amen. again. Amen. And guys, please think about some of these this, this key values, these key principles that God puts out for us about who we should get involved with in marriage. Now, this week, uh, last week, we've been talking about the ideal man. And next week, by the grace of God, we'll be back and try to discuss the ideal woman. And this one here should be for the guys out there. Amen. <laughs> who, who is she like? Because, trust me, I've been in your shoes before. So, <laughs> and it's such a challenge, especially when you're now butchering around here. Please, <laughs> please don't butcher. Yes. Find that right person, yes. you know, and they're out there. Yes. And we'll be helping you uh, figure out some of the things that you need to consider and the values. So keep it so food. And if there's anything else that you want us to talk about, I always remind you, please let us know. Our social media handles are at Urban TV Uganda. You can also reach out to us at Urban TV Uganda directly. And let us know how we can be able to help you and bless you. For now, keep faithing and keep believing. Until next week, God bless you. <laughs>